Hello, my name is Gregory Malika, and today I'm going to tell you about work we're doing at Bedrock Systems on building a verification infrastructure for C++. This is joint work with my colleagues Abhishek Anand and Gordon Stewart. One of the goals of Bedrock Systems is to develop an unbreakable foundation for the software-defined world. For us, that means formally verified systems-level components against deep specifications. And we like to use the technology that we're using to do this to enable everyone to write and share verified code. Our system level components are essentially a hypervisor and user level applications running on top of it provide, for example, virtual machine access um, as well as services like virtual ethernet and virtual console multiplexing. We'd also like the ability to write um, unverified applications that run side by side with our verified ones sandboxed appropriately. The distinguishing characteristic of this setup that I'm going to focus on in this talk is the fact that all of this code is written in C++ and as I said before we want to establish deep correctness properties of this low-level code that is also highly concurrent. And So the topic of this talk is how do we do that? How do we work with C++ and achieve these strong guarantees? To do this, we're building a verification tool chain that takes C++ programs and produces proofs. But how do we get from the source program to the proof? The setup is one that we um, are inspired by uh, previous work like VST, uh, where we develop uh, syntax and semantics um, of C++ within Coq. Then we use a tool to extract our C++ code into Galena abstract syntax trees um, of these of, of C++ programs. Developers of that code, clients of our verification infrastructure, then write specifications about their own code. And our verification infrastructure kind of combines the syntax, the semantics, the specifications, along with a bunch of automation to construct a proof. Of course, that's a there's a little bit of manual effort in there. Um, but we're not going to go into the automation today. Uh, we're going to focus over here on the CPU2V tool and uh, the logic and the syntax of C++ in Coq. So we're going to build on a lot of previous work in this. Obviously, researchers started with very simple things like IMP, and I've already mentioned the fact that they've grown and developed impressive systems around C, like Comsert and BST. Uh, we're going to take this, we believe, one step farther by approaching C++, and we're going to build our our semantics and our logic on top of the IRS separation logic library. So I don't have time to go into all the aspects of C++ that are interesting, but I'm going to focus on three main components. Surface complexities like parsing type checking, semantic challenges like value categories and side effects. Uh, those are mostly extensions to C++ or extensions to, sorry, extensions to C. Uh, and then the, the distinguishing factor or a distinguishing factor about C++ is the existence of classes and objects and I'll talk a little bit about the way, about the way that we model those. So let's start with surface complexities and the key insight here is, is that we can hook into a lot of existing tooling to get most of the things at this surface level kind of in some sense for free. So just taking a step back recall that the, the problem here is we want to take C++ source programs and produce abstract syntax trees in Galena. And C++ has obviously complicated parsing. It has complicated rules around overload resolution and things like that. And to avoid having to encode and formalize all of those, we are instead building off the Clang infrastructure and getting Clang to do all of the heavy lifting in this phase for us to some extent. So we have a tool that uh, compiles linking into Clang it can either be run as a plugin or as a standalone tool. And you basically give it the source file you want and tell it where you want to generate the output. And you give it all of the clean compiler options that you're planning to compile your actual code with. So in this case, we're compiling uh, with uh, C++ version 17. Uh, we've got some include directors, etc. And um, we're compiling for ARM. And uh, Clang will parse this file for us in exactly the same way that it will parse uh, when it does the actual compilation. And then we, 
as in this CPP to V, will come in, take the abstract syntax tree from that, and um, munge it into something that Kalina can understand. One great thing about the representation that we're that we're hooking into is the fact that um, there's minimal pre-processing that occurs before this stage, and therefore what we the, the syntax that we're operating on is actually very close to the C++ standard. We get to include extra information that Clang has resolved here, including things like value categories, types, implicit initializers, and overload resolution, which is very important later down the line. All right, so now on to semantic challenges. Here we're, we're deviating from what is done in VST. We're using weakest precondition style semantics encoded in Iris. Iris wasn't available when, when VST started. Um, and this is going to make our program logic look something like this. Uh, WPPRVAL, you can think of this as the weakest precondition for PR values, which you can think of as something like integers. Uh, those of you familiar with Iris might notice the CoP set uh, used for capturing the Iris mask, but we also have a lot of other features here. Declarations um, capture things like what are the fields in the struct. Thread identifiers allow us to capture core or thread local information. Um, and uh, regions um, are our way of capturing local variables, which we'll talk about uh, shortly. We also have free temporaries. These are temporaries or code that needs to be run essentially when this expression uh, terminates and um, values need to be cleaned up. So I mentioned before that we we handle regions. Uh, regions are our way of our our way of modeling uh, of modeling local variables. We actually represent all program state uniformly as resources. This is not the same as the way that uh, VST works, and that keeps us a little closer to the um, to the source language that C++ has. It gives us a simple representation of stack allocated structs, and it gives a more uniform uh, representation. It gives us more uniform representation predicates. So we can talk about um, a representation predicate for a class, for example, and it doesn't matter whether or not it is materialized or not materialized. All locations in our logic are implicitly materialized. Another thing that comes up in C++ is that we need to handle file modular verification in a way that we don't. you don't necessarily have to do um, in C. It's useful to do it in C, but especially with things like templates, a lot of C++ developers write a fair amount of code in header files. And to do that, we need to um, be able to verify the header file once and then use it in multiple places and not have to redo the verification. Now, the great thing here is, is that the fact that we use resolved names in our abstract syntax tree, essentially mangled names, means that unlike uh, at the actual source level, at our AST level, um, the semantics of programs is preserved un under compatible extensions. And that's because uh, if a function is overloaded, the exact overload that is used is recorded in the, at the call site and is not resolved kind of dynamically um, based on the entire context. All right, the last feature I'm gonna talk a little bit about is classes and objects. And here, the idea is that we're going to describe the object system inside the separation logic. So first, just thinking about it, actually a large portion of classes and objects are not really anything interesting. Uh, they can basically be desugared de into C in a fairly naive manner. Constructors are member functions, and destructors are essentially just um, functions that have an extra implicit this parameter. And there's a little bit of extra complexity that's added for destructors because they need to be invoked um, when the object is destroyed. However, we note that actually it's kind of convenient to have destructors because your destructors precondition can actually mention the class, the custom class representation predicate that you've come up with and destruct it kind of appropriately in that way that encapsulates what's going on. Virtual functions are the one thing that is a little bit more complicated in this setup. And to track virtual functions, we need to track object identity. Luckily for us, uh, a lot of work has already gone into this. Um, Tahina Ramanandaro, uh, dissertation was all about this. Um, 
And we've basically taken the ideas in his dissertation and encoded them inside of our separation logic using predicates like this identity predicate, which basically says that the pointer down here, PTR, is a pointer to an object that has this type, glob name. Glob name is our representation of uh, struct names. But it's a member of the most derived class glob name. And so if you have a base class, um, let's say A, um, and it's extended by B, then the base class A would live here, but it's a member of the most derived class B. And so virtual dispatch will, will actually use this most derived class to compute which function to call. And that's all done within our logic. That's a great way to express the property inside, basically reflecting the semantics of, of the language into uh, separation logic. But it doesn't, using this directly doesn't provide it wonderful reasoning principles. And so we're actually looking for um, good abstractions for reasoning about this. And if you have ideas, we'd love to hear them. Um, so I've talked about a bunch of pieces of C++, but uh, obviously C++ is too big of a language to cover in 15 minutes, and uh, it's more, there are things that we don't support, CPDV does not currently support. Some unsupported features we have are reasoning about uninstantiated templates, um, uh, lambda expressions, virtual inheritance, and exceptions. Uh, exceptions are common in our, in our code anyway, so we haven't been planning on supporting them. Um, also, things like weak memory are very important to us. However, we should note that weak memory in C and in C++ is basically the same. And so we're hoping to leverage a lot of the existing work um, that the folks in, uh, the folks working on IRIS have done on weak memory in our own formalism. The other piece of this talk I like to talk about is the fact that uh, our verification is for everybody. We want, and we've been working with systems engineers uh, people with no formal methods background, no formal training in formal methods, uh, on how to verify and specify their own code. We've actually had a great deal of success with this. Um, we have systems engineers who have told us that, you know, um, thinking about their problem in terms of separation logic, in terms of ownership, really helps them clarify, you know, what they can do, what they can't do, what is the contract. It gives them a concise way to describe what's supposed to happen and that gives them a nice way to communicate that to other programmers um, and to themselves down the line. Um, one of the things that's been very helpful is the fact that when we go and teach them, when we work with them, we aren't asking them to learn a completely new language. We get, they get to use C++, which they're already familiar with, and they we are able to map the concepts in verification to the concepts that they're already familiar with, things like uh, classes, introduce representation predicates and introduce abstraction, things like that are very helpful to them as they write code and then they map it to specifications and then uh, ultimately they think about the way that their specifications work with one another. Um, we have several systems engineers who are able to write uh, specifications around um, interesting, well, <clears throat> around classes that are interesting to some extent. Um, not super complicated uh, concurrent invariants and things like that, but first order specifications of data structures that are very common in this sort of systems code that we're working on um, is definitely within the purview of, of several of the systems engineers we have, and uh, that experience is growing out into the, the wider uh, group of our systems engineers. In summary, uh, cpv to v is a tool for importing C++ code into Coq. It's built on top of the Clang tool chain, and, and and by virtue of that, inherits a lot of the benefits of uh, a lot of the functionality that's already built into the Clang toolchain. We also have an axiomatic semantics for a large portion, but not all, of C++. There's some interesting challenges in C++, things about dynamic dispatch and things like that. But um, I think it's also um, building off Iris has been a very uh, great experience. Uh, we've learned a lot about it. and. Uh, We've been able to express some things that, you know, 10 years ago I wouldn't have thought was like barely possible. Uh, we've been able to express that in a very nice way. So CPP to V is open source. Contributions, collaborations, and users are all welcome. Uh, here's the link, and I uh, hope to hear from you. Thank you so much.